Hi guys! So I've chosen a rainy Tuesday to film my summer capsule wardrobe, conveniently. I'm taking off to Canada tomorrow, so this is sort of like a packed in, packing practice and just sort of gathering up everything that I've been wearing this summer thus far. Um, I try to live with a capsule wardrobe for each season. Most of the items that I have are tri-seasonal. Um, fall and spring are kind of the same thing here in Europe. Um, so I basically just have a tri-seasonal wardrobe. Um, everything that I have here is either secondhand, vintage, eco and ethically made, or swapped, or um, upcycled. Uh, so I try to make sure that whenever I'm buying clothing that I try to follow the, the, those five rules. Um, and I only support eco and ethical brands that are both. So those are brands that are considering from the farmers in the field who grow things like cotton, um, not having having organic cotton means that there's no pesticides involved um, and the problem with pesticides is that it affects the farmers, it affects the water supply of the community causing various health issues to the children and the adults who live there as well as the wildlife and their um, flora as well, so the food that they eat um, and it causes cancers and developmental di or disorders and so on and so forth. I can't even name all the issues that pesticides cause and then from there the, the, the um, fiber is gurned and then from there it is spun and turned into fabric and um, along all those lines if pesticides are used they affect the people in the production line as well and then the main issue with fast fashion is the ethical side um, which is having people sew the clothing in unsafe and inhumane conditions for very little wages uh, so and then it comes to us um, to be consumed and so the idea behind a capsule wardrobe is to consume less just by things that you love and things that are interchangeable throughout the season so that you can um, basically not consume as much. So I think if you're buying anything new, make sure it's eco and ethical. And if you want to buy something that is from a fast fashion company that you really, really love, try to buy it secondhand instead of buying it new just to reduce the push of consumption. Um, so I'm going to show you each of the items that I have. The first one is, um, oh yeah, and I'm going to wear this Ayuku, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, it's A-I-K-Y-O-U, I'm going to um, link it in below, but this underwear set is an eco and ethical brand from Germany, and I find it's the best underneath everything. Normally I would change the color to go with what I'm wearing, but just for the purposes of this, it'll be quicker. Uh, so this is a second-hand uh, onesie that I bought from Kilo Shop here in Paris. I had it shortened because I'm short. Um, but it's one of my favorite new things, new to me things. Then I have these two button ups, which one of them is from Kilo Shop, and the other one I got at a Vite de Grenier, which is like a garage sale that they do here in Paris. Um, and I wear these all through the seasons. T shirts. This one is from Wow Sancho. Um, it's really comfortable, and the color isn't the color I would normally wear, but I quite like it. Kind of goes with my hair, and it's organic cotton. And then, oop. and then this one's from Young Maven. It's or sorry, no, this one's from Le Sublime, and it's modal. I've been wearing this pretty much nonstop and like exercising in it. It's also my favorite travel shirt. Um, it's starting to get a little worn down, but I still love it. Um, so this one is made with modal, and it's made here in France as well by a French brand. This one's by Young Maven, and it's a hemp shirt. This is probably my favorite T-shirt overall um, because it's so diverse and super comfortable and hemp is the most eco-friendly fabric that you can wear. Um, I can link in a story below about hemp so you can learn a bit more but Young Maven is my favorite hemp t-shirt brand. And then this one is from no, no The Origin which is organic cotton. It's just a really cute crop shirt um, and it's super soft and I like the style. It's different than the other ones that I have. And then for tank tops I have, I'm a little bit too short for my hanging. Um, this is a really old Urban Outfitters shirt. I will link in, I found a few online on eBay that you can buy if you want the same one. My friend bought it for me. It's got holes in it and stuff, but I just really like the way that it looks. I mean, it's comfortable. Um, it was not eco-friendly or ethically made, but because it was given as a gift, I've worn it for probably seven years now, uh, maybe a bit longer. This one is from Joyiti, which is a German brand. It's organic cotton. It's kind of annoying to tie on, but once it's on, it's really cute. Um, this one, I don't even know where it is. It's just a normal black tank top. I've had it for probably 10 or 15 years. Um, I'll try and show you better. 
And then this is a onesie that I wear all throughout the year. It's just a black vintage onesie that I got in San Antonio at a sale at Blue Star. If you're ever in San Antonio, they have vintage um, racks up on Sundays, and I got this there. Um, and then this is from my cousin-in-law, Cody, who is the exact same size as me, and uh, I really love it. It goes with everything. Um, so it was a nice swap that we did last time I was in San Antonio. Try and hang these up correctly. This I wore, I had in my spring capsule wardrobe as well, which I'll link in below. It's just a little like cover up from thought clothing and it's ethically made and eco-friendly as well. Something I stole from my mom, it's just an embroidered um, cover up shirt that is super diverse and goes with kind of everything as well. This is from the Kilo shop. I just bought it a couple weeks ago and it's already one of my favorite things. And then I have this maxi dress, which is from Flynn Sky. I got it on eBay. Uh, for my brother-in-law's wedding um, and it just fits really well and you can wear it casually or dressy as well and then these overalls are from Liz Lang and they're organic cotton and they fit super cute and they're just really light like instead of wearing jean overalls all summer wearing a light uh, organic cotton overall is much more comfortable I've had to sort of resize them so they may kind of look a bit awkward because I've just moved the necessary buttons to be able to do this video and I'm going to do the rest on the plane um, and then I've just got a few cover-ups which I'll show you these are kind of my like warmer layers I also travel with a sweatshirt but this um, jacket is from Zara I got it like 10 years ago um, and I've had it fixed like probably 10 times. I've either so re-sewn it myself or had someone who can sew better than me sew it. Um, I can link it and I'll try and find some on eBay that are secondhand. It goes with everything and I wear it in the spring, summer, and fall. And then this one's also from Zara from about 10 years ago as well. It's just a um, cardigan and it's nice and flowy and everything fits under it. This is a hat that my husband bought for an audition he had. Um, he got it from the Kilo shop in, uh, in Paris here. And I've kind of just stolen it and made it my own because I like the way it looks on me. And when my hair is greasy or sort of unkept, it covers up the mess that I've made. Um, and then I have these jeans, which are from Topshop. I've been wearing the same style of Topshop jeans since I was in my early 20s. And I haven't found anything that fits my short legs. Like, I'm quite petite, but I have wide hips and I'm quite short, so I find that uh, this style just works on me. So I've been buying them secondhand on eBay. I will link in below where you can get them, but I'm still looking for a pair of eco-friendly and ethically made jeans. But secondhand is kind of second best, um, or first best. These are a pair of vintage Lee uh, cutoffs. Well, they were jeans, but I cut them off to make them into shorts, and I wear them all summer. And then these are from a brand called Novella Royale. She is, it's all ethically made in the States, but she used to do it out of recycled fabrics when I got these, and now she's moved on to non-recycled fabrics. Um, I think she was using recycled saris before, so I've had these for about 10 years as well, and um, they're super comfortable and kind of stylish, um, but they're starting to sort of fall apart at the, at the ends, but I'm going to make them last a couple more summers, hopefully. Um, and then the three pairs of shoes that I am wearing... <laughs> I have these cowboy boots that I bought off eBay from a girl in Portland. I've had them for two or three years. Um, I really like the way cowboy boots look and they're super comfortable. So I usually wear them all summer, spring and fall as well. In the winter it gets a little bit wet here, so not so much. Um, these OFKT shoes, which I always wear. Um, they're starting to get a little bit worn down, but uh, I've been wearing them almost irresponsibly. I haven't been um, taking care of the, the leather. Um, they're all made from upcycled leathers which are discarded by another industry so they're just making cuts based on the size of the leather um, and they're really really well made and incredibly durable which is important when you live in a city like Paris and walk a lot. These I've just replaced with a pair by um, Seiko I think it's called. I just um, they're, I ordered them to Canada so I'm going to pick them up there. These. They're pretty much the same as these, but actually comfortable. I picked these up secondhand at a secondhand shop in, in Tooting in London, and they're so, so, so uncomfortable and so unsafe because you slip around in them. I don't know who they're by, but um, I really like the crossover slide style. So I'll link in below. My friend Leah did a really good post on crossover slides, so I can link them in if you um, are looking for some. 
And then the last few things, I've just got this scarf which my friend Sylvie gave me um, and I find it just goes with everything and keeps me, it's like a nice extra layer to have when I'm traveling and then just a nice little accessory style piece. And then we just got this at a Ville de Grenier the other, this last weekend. Um, I have a larger one, like a Kachowan sweater that I wear in the winter, but I was looking for one that actually fit me in the summer. And this is like a vintage rancher sweater, um, and it's super cute and kind of goes with everything, and it's a nice warmer layer for Canada. And then last, I've got some jewelry. This is a vintage necklace thing um, that I bought for a friend and never gave it to her. This is by a really, really lovely brand called Dharma Woods. Um, the guy who runs it is probably the kindest person I've ever met on email. Um, this is a vintage uh, necklace that I've restrung a whole bunch of times and kind of need to restring again. And then this is a vintage bone carved necklace that I've had for, I think it was my mom's, um, and it was secondhand or vintage when she found it. So those are kind of my four accessory pieces along with the scarf. So now I'm going to try it all on um, and show you how they all go together. I forgot to say, I keep saying Kilo Shop, it's a vintage, or a string of vintage stores that are here in Paris, um, and you buy everything by the Kilo, so it's a really cheap way to get vintage clothing or secondhand clothing. They have a really nice selection of stuff. Um, it's totally affordable. I'm putting together an eco guide to Paris, um, which should be ready in the fall, so I will be sure to link that in once. I get that together, um, but I'll also link in the Kilo Shop below and which one's my favorite um, and in the post as well. So a lot of the links that I'm promising below I'm actually going to have in the blog post, which will definitely be linked in below. Touch, I learned to love 
first thing, first thing. First thing, first thing, I'm gonna love you. First thing, first thing, love you. First thing, first thing, I'm gonna love you. First thing. humid here right now so it's trying to not like drip down with sweat um, but those are my extra layers and if they go they go and if they don't they don't but most of them I think almost every outfit one of the extra layers goes and I'm not sure if I finished when I was talking about the circular story I think I got to the wages that fast fashion pays compared to ethical wages but then also what I wanted to say was like for all the products for all the fibers that come from natural um, from, from the field, like non-organic cotton, those pesticides also stay in the fabric after they come to you and we ingest through our pores all those pesticides as well. So it's not just somebody else who's affected if that's not what sort of ignites your empathy. It's also for you, especially for children and babies, it's really dangerous to dress them in clothing that has been dyed with unnatural dyes and also clothing that has been produced without um, with with pesticides. There's also like um, some of the non-natural fibers, most of them come from oil, uh, so they're derived from, from a non-renewable resource. Um, sorry, my cat's meowing his way in here. He's just jumped in through the ceiling in the bathroom and may make an appearance if he feels like it, but it's cool. Um, so, so yeah, so some there are non-natural fibers which are man-made they cost the planet and their inhabitants a huge amount through the chemical production of their of their creation. Um, so that's something to keep in mind next time you hit the high street or any other fast fashion store um, and to try and produce uh, or try, to try to try and bleh, to try and uh, um, sorry I'm distracted by my cat <laughs> to just to try and. Um, uh, spend your money with with brands that are doing things with the planet and its inhabitants in mind, or by buying things that are are secondhand or swapping or vintage and diverting um, already made products from the line from the landfill. Um, anyways, I hope you liked this um, video. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, I scared my cat away. I forgot to talk about my bags. Uh, I they're the same bags that were in my. Um, spring collection, this one is from Trunk Collective and it's handmade by women in Guatemala, paid fair wages, 
using upcycled um, yarns. And then this one is from Sonia Kashmiri, London. Um, I had a comment from someone below being like, how can uh, leather be ethical? Uh, I have a sort of long-winded explanation, but basically until people stop eating meat, um, leather is still being, or animals are still being killed for meat. And so if the leather comes from animals who are killed for meat, I'm not eating meat, but, and you might not be eating meat, but the meat is still being um, produced. Uh, the leather that comes from meat production is better for the planet for it to be used than for it not to be used. I think you need to choose very, very carefully and really research any brands that you are buying leather from um, and only a few products in your entire uh, wardrobe if you are comfortable with wearing leather that comes as a byproduct from the meat industry. You need to really research where that comes from so that you're not um, uh, encouraging animals being killed for for just for the leather, which I, I don't think happens that often. But this brand I researched tons, and I will link in the story that I did on this um, on this bag, which was handmade in Portugal. Um, and this will last me a lifetime. This one I'm really, really wearing hard, so I'm hoping it'll last me another year or two, but we'll see what happens. Um, and they go with pretty much everything. So yeah, long story short, that's my uh, entire capsule wardrobe. I'm going to link in below uh, the blog post that goes with this, which will have links to each one of the products. Anything that I found vintage or secondhand, I'll try and find something similar on eBay or on Etsy that you can purchase if you're looking for something that's kind of like it. Um, and I'm wishing you all a lovely summer. So I just as a little bonus, my husband thinks it's really impressive that all of that fits inside my... Osprey carry-on bag, um, and when you're trying to travel zero waste, one of the important things is not having checked luggage. I am still going to have checked luggage for Canada because I'm bringing a suitcase that I bought about seven years ago back to get fixed at Manitoba Equipment Co-op, I mean Mountain Equipment Co-op, which is in Manitoba, um, but I thought I'd just quickly show you that had I not been bringing that bag back uh, to get repaired. It's got a big rip in it because we can take it camping. I could just go with the carry-on with my laptop in um, in my shoulder bag. The only thing is is that like my jacket doesn't fit in as well, um, nor does the big sweater. So this is just if you weren't bringing outerwear, um, you can fit this all in. And I wear my cowboy boots on the plane. Normally I travel in my beiges, but I don't think I'm going to bring them um, just because I want to stay light because I have a couple of like long layovers and I want to be able to just go um, out with just this bag which also turns into a backpack. So I'll fast forward this now. I've proven to my husband that it all fits in this carry-on, which is smaller than your average carry-on. So if we had, I can't see the other bag, the other bag, which is a little bit bigger, um, I could put my laptop and my sweater and my toiletries in probably a bigger bag. But this Osprey one is kind of a lot smaller, which makes it not my favorite bag, but it's very durable and it was ethically made, apparently. Um, so yeah, so this is pretty much everything that I'm taking to Canada, apart from my toiletries, my running shoes. My swimsuits, which are in a pile on the floor over there, and my underwear and socks, which will all fit in this carry-on bag as well. And I have proven my husband wrong once again, for the second time in my life. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you.